Hello everyone, welcome to Aptitude Jab. This is a network based problem and it says that there are 8 loading and unloading stations of a company connected by 8 roads R1 through R8. C1, C2, C3 are different cars that travel between these stations. All cars run at the same speed. Alongside each of the roads, a number is given in the figure which indicates the traveling time taken by any car to travel between two stations connected by that road. So for example, at R1, it takes 10 minutes from A to B. R2 takes 12, 14 minutes from B to C. R3 takes 12 minutes from C to D and so on. Similarly, there is a number given in the with the name of the stations in bracket, which gives the halting time of a car at that particular station. So for example, a car at A will halt for two minutes. If it reaches B, it will halt for 4 minutes. If it reaches C, it will halt for 4 minutes and so on. So for example, let us say a car has to go from E to H and we need to find the time. How much will it take to go from E to H? So if a car is starting from here, it takes 17 minutes, 15 minutes plus 16 minutes for the road journey. That is 48 plus 6 minutes of halting time. So it will reach H in 54 minutes. Now using this information, we have to answer the questions. So the first question says, if C1 starts from A at 11 am in a clockwise direction and C2 starts from F in an anti-clockwise direction at the same time, what time will they meet each other for the first time? So C1 starts from A and C2 starts from F, right? So these are the directions. Now do not count 2 because it is when a car reaches A and halts. Since the car is starting from A, we will not count 2. And similarly, we will not count 3 here. Okay. So, we will find the total time between these two junctions. So, the time is 10, 14, 28, 32, 44, 47, 58, 60, 77. So, the time is 77. Now, both cars are running at the same speed. So, divide by 2. That will be 38.5 minutes. Now, one thing we need to verify is the point at which they meet. If they meet at a junction, the answer would be different. In one of the questions, this principle will be used. So, let us find where will the car be at 38.5 minutes, any of the cars. So, let's take uh, this car starting from a 10, 14, 28, 32. So, at 38.5, it is me me moving in R3. So, the answer is 38.5 minutes. So, 11, 38, 30 a.m. Next question says, if C1 starts from C uh, at 7 a.m. in a clockwise direction and a car starts from H every 15 minutes with the first car leaving H at 7 a.m., all the cars which leave H run in an anti-clockwise direction, how many cars will C1 cross until it reaches H for the first time? So, a car starts from C at 7 a.m. And it has to reach H and every 15 minutes, there is a car starting from C, uh, from H. Okay. So, let us find out that how much time does C take to reach H. 12, 15, 26, 28, 45, 48, 63, 66, 82 minutes. So, it takes 82 minutes. Now, some of you might have done is you divide 82 by 15 because there are uh, like after every 15 minutes a car starts and would have got 5 as the answer. Okay. But that is a wrong answer because you are not considering in that case we are not considering the car starting at t equal to 0 which is 7 am. Okay. So, if you calculate this way you will be skipping the count of the car which starts at 7. So, instead let us understand this way. It takes 82 minutes. So, 7 am plus 82 gives us that it reaches at 8.22 am. Okay. Now, car starts from H at 7 am. Then next car will start at 7.15, 7.30, and 8 and then 8.15. So, all these cars will be met by the car which is starting from C. So, the answer to this question is 6. Since there were fewer values, we were able to calculate manually. But if there were more values, let us say if there were 40 cars, 
So you will add 1 to the answer because 1 car starts at t equal to 0 also. Next question says, if C1 starts from H at 10 a.m. and it keeps traveling indefinitely, then by 10 p.m. of the same day, how many times will it have crossed station D? So, a car starts from H at 10 a.m. First of all, it is it keeps traveling. That means it is completing cycles. So, let us find the cycle time. Now, from C to H, we already know it is 82. So, let us build on that and find the time taken to complete one complete cycle by the cars. So, 82 plus 8 gives us 90. This gives us 100, 115. 115 plus 18, 133. So, one cycle is 133 minutes. Okay. So, the time is 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., which is 720 minutes. 720, when you divide by 133, you get 5 complete rounds. Okay. 5 cycles means 133 into 5. If we do this, is 7, uh, 600. 65 and uh, you get 720 minus 665 plus 55 minutes. So basically it is 5 cycles plus 55 minutes. Okay. Now in this question, like in the previous two questions we were given whether they are traveling clockwise or anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Anti in this direction is not given whether it is going clockwise or anti-clockwise. So now the car has to reach from H to D. So we will find whether it can reach D in 55 minutes or not. So if you go in this direction, how much time does it take? 15, 25, uh, 29, 43, 47, 59. So it cannot reach D if it started in clockwise direction. Similarly, if it goes in this direction, 16, 19, uh, 34, 37, uh, 54, 56. So it cannot reach D. So in either case, it cannot reach D in 55 minutes. So it does not whether it matter whether it started clockwise or anti-clockwise. It would have crossed station D only five times. The next question is that if C1 and C2 start from B and F respectively at the same time in opposite directions, find the minimum time that they will take to meet each other for the first time. So B and F start in opposite directions. So B and F, since they are starting in opposite directions, we are not given which direction. So one direction could be that B and F travel this way. Okay. And second way could be B and F travel from F to F from F in clockwise direction and B in anti-clockwise direction. Now, one thing to note here is that uh, we know the total cycle time is 133 minutes. We will ignore 3 and 4 because they are starting from these junctions. So, the remaining time is 126 minutes. Okay. And uh, let us find one of the cycles. Okay. We, we need not calculate both the cycles. We can find one of the cycles and get the result. So, this is 14 plus 4, 18. Okay. Then 30, 33, 33 plus 13, 46, 63 minutes. So, here the time taken is 63 minutes. So, from this end also, it should be uh, 63 plus 7 is 70, 63 minutes from this end also. Now, you might be tempted to answer 31.5 as we did in the first question, right? We What we did was we divided by 2. So, you will get 31.5 based on this. But as I told you that we need to check at 31.5 at which point will they be. So, if you consider this journey 14, 18, 30. So, at 30 it is here and till 33 it is at this point only. Similarly, car F3 Okay, a uh, car who starts from F is at uh, 1930. So, at 30 it is here and at 33 it is moving out of the station. So, essentially they have reached station D in 30 minutes itself. Okay, so they will, they will meet at station D in 30 minutes itself because they are leaving at the 33rd minute. So, need not take half as we did in the first question. 
which is a uh, mistake in this problem if you make uh, it take half so we need to consider that at what point they meet for example in the first question we figured out that they meet at somewhere in between now let us look at this journey also where will these two people be at 31.5 minutes so 15 plus 3 18 18 plus 16 34 so at 34 it is traveling in this direction so definitely they will meet somewhere in between okay so the answer to this question is 30 minutes then the next question says if c1 starts from g in a clockwise direction at 9 20 am and meets c2 at b which started from d in an anti-clockwise direction when is the earliest time c2 could have started so car starts from g and uh, then meets c2 at b starts from g and meets at b okay so first of all let us find out at what time will it reach station b so it starts at 16 20 33 35 45 right so 45 means it starts at 9 20 so it will reach here at 10 5 and will stay here till 10 9 Now another car, it starts uh, D in an anti-clockwise direction. So this car should start from D. And it takes 12 plus 4, 16 plus 14, 30 minutes to reach this point. Okay. Now it says that when is the earliest time C2 could have started. Now from this you would subtract 30 and get 10 5 minus 30 will give you 935. But think of the scenario that this car is reaching B and at the same moment this car is leaving. Okay, suppose this it is saying that they meet at B. Okay, it is not necessary that they both reach and meet. Possible that this car has already reached and then it takes a halt of 4 minutes and then was moving when this car arrived. So we will add another 4 minutes. So instead of 30, we will subtract 34 minutes and get 931 as the answer. So 931 is the earliest start for this car. Similarly, if the question was the was about the latest start. So in that case, what we will do is we will start the car at uh, like we will assume that the car is cars meet when this car is leaving this station, which is at 10 9 and this car starts at the latest possible and reaches here in 30 minutes. So the answer would have been 9.39. However, the question is about the earliest. So the answer will be 9.31 a.m. So I hope you loved solving this set and uh, learned the process of solving these root-based questions. So don't forget to like this video.